It's Oscar time. March 2nd marks the 86th annual Academy Awards. Right now, I am joined by the Boston Globe film critic, Ty Burr. So it's been a really exciting year for a lot of great films. Now, let's talk about how the real life depiction is something that is in very many of the best, best pictures this year. Yeah, it always seems, in fact, it's kind of a foolproof Oscar genre. If you want respect, base it on a real story of somebody who went through some struggles. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy to be cynical about that, but it actually does turn into some really terrific movies that are very moving. Um, and uh, this year, there are six, six of the nine Best Picture nominees are based on actual stories, uh, including American Hustle, which does play fast and loose with the Abscam scandal, but still is based in characters who really existed. Which movie do you think had the strongest depiction? I have to say, I think 12 Years a Slave is based very closely on the actual memoirs of right. Solomon Northup, and they're available online, they're in the public domain, and I've read them, and that movie does not exaggerate. Ty, in one of your reviews for American Hustle, you talked about Jennifer Lawrence's emotions, like she smears them across the screen like fingerprints. Serious imagery right there. Talk about the female actresses and how much they've come out this year. I think we've got a bunch of actresses out there who um, are really hungry for good roles, and we've got a bunch of filmmakers that are providing them. Um, and whether you're talking about Woody Allen with Kate Blanchett and Blue Jasmine, or you're talking about David O. Russell, who has said that he made American Hustle to spotlight what Amy Adams could do. Um, and she's terrific in the film. And Jennifer Lawrence, who is, I think at this point, probably the most well-loved young mm -hmm. star, because she's just so happily out of control when she's in public. She just is herself. She is and, who she is. But then she'll go on screen and be somebody else who's also happily out of control as she is in American Hustle. Actresses in Hollywood disappear after they're 35, they get put out on an ice floe, um, whereas, you know, George Clooney rolls on forever. Um, <laughs> but this year it's somewhat different in that you do have people like Meryl Streep in August Osage County, Judy Dench in Philomena, um, Emma Thompson in Saving Mr. Banks. She wasn't nominated, but um, a lot of people felt she should be. It was just a good year for actresses of all, you know, all ages and sizes and talents. Some people wait for the nods from the Academy, but they also want to know what you think. So if there are two movies that people haven't seen, there's still plenty of time, what are they? I'm surprised how few people have seen Dallas Buyers Club. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they think it's a heavy, depressing subject and it's not a, you know, a fun Uplifting, subject, but, yeah. but it is a surprisingly involving and at times entertaining movie. Matthew McConaughey gives a tremendous performance. Jared Leto, in support, who's probably going to win Best Supporting Actor, gives a tremendous performance. It's a, it's a really audience-friendly, uh, engaging, and, and moving movie, and I think people should see it. Okay, second one. What else? Nebraska. Okay. Uh, uh, Bruce Dern comes back from the career dead and gets a nominated for Best Actor. Um, June Squibb playing his wife is, is delightful. Will Forte from Saturday Night Live gives a really good mm -hmm. dramatic performance. Uh, it's one of Alexander Payne's best movies. Um, and I actually think it's a movie that uh, older audiences who often feel that there's not a lot of stuff out there for them would really, really relate to. Okay, so this is Ty Burr. All of his reviews you can find online at bostonglobe.com. And you can read all about the updating Oscars on the way and your thoughts on them as well. Thank Thanks, you. Ty.